So this is an Indiana Jones I've got in that's got to have a new decals applied to it. As you can see, they're all very faded. That's all meant to be orange there. Um, you can still see a little bit of it showing through there. Obviously somebody's coloured in all these reds with a biro. All of that's gone as well. And the front, and not surprisingly, the other side as well. The cabinet's not in too bad a shape. It's got a couple of bad bits uh, filling. And unusually, it's got three holes for legs bolts. I've only ever seen that on a Twilight Zone before, but uh, we're filling, I think it's the top one of these. It's not going to get used. Um, it's the same on the front. It's all going to show got three. And actually the plate behind has got three bolts in as well, so I'm not quite sure why some of those machines are like that. Perhaps somebody can email me and let me know. Um, as you can see, from the decals that are going to go on, that's what the oranges should look like. So, a massive difference as you can see from there. Uh, that's all meant to look like a sunrise on there. So the first job is to uh, strip all the back box down, get all the circuit boards out, uh, all the display, get all the hinges off. These side rails are in pretty good nick. That's the only little ding on it there. I don't know if that'll pick it up. So we're going to try and salvage those as they're, uh, they're in good shape. So hopefully they'll come off okay. Uh, then obviously the coin door. The gun's got to come off, the trigger. Where the lockdown, the security bar was on there. We'll fill all of those because we don't want to see that afterwards. Um, and then obviously take the play field out so, to get it all clear. So I'll get on with that and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look at the next stage after that. Okay, so that's everything out of the back box. All the wires, the old rat's nest is uh, safely down there. And there's only two bolts. There's one each side you've got to take out of this. And obviously make sure the catch is off. And we should be just be able to lift that off clear now. So uh, let's have a go and see how easy it is. So let's grab it from the back. at the one side and we'll come back to that later. Now for the play field. Okay so I've separated all the wiring loom in here so that that's just the one that goes to the play field and all the other stuff will go down there. So hopefully now we should just be able to lift the slide the play field back and it should lift out in one piece as we put this over here so basically it should all lift out. There are a couple of interconnected wires um, which I found. This isn't actually my machine and there's a few uh, few bodged together wires in there but I've labelled all those up so they can all be reconnected so uh, let's give it a lift out and see what happens right we can put this back down and we should be able to slide it here There we go, out in one piece. So we can put that to one side now. Okay, that's the cabinet stripped down now. Uh, all the side rails are off and the uh, the runners that keep the glass in here. Uh, you can see some of the orange, how it should have been originally on there as well. All of these bits are off. Again, there's another little bit of orange there, look. Amazing how these things fade. All the flipper buttons are out etc from inside coin door and all the buttons off so now could I start stripping the all the bits off of the head unit so there we go that's the back box all stripped off as well all the bolts uh, that, for the brackets that hold it all together I've undone them leave the ones in the top because nobody ever sees that and obviously all these bolts will have to be sprayed so all the mounting brackets for the the lighting board etc are off so now we've just got to start stripping both of the uh, both of the cabinets down
Okay, so the method I prefer for taking these uh, decals off, the old ones, is just a heat gun and a, a scraper. Basically, you put the heat on and then scrape towards it so you're constantly heating up an area. Um, so you're bubbling it up and you can just keep a, keep a rhythm going with it. Because with the main box, there's quite a lot to do. So uh, let's see how we get on. Once it starts bubbling, it's, uh, you can keep the heat going very well on it. And you want to make sure you heat it well because all this white stuff you can see behind here is glue. So if you don't get that off now, uh, when you've got the heat on it, you've got to get it off later, which is uh, more of a pain in the butt. So it's uh, better to keep doing this. So there you go, that's one side of the back box burnt off now. Obviously it's leaving all this, all that white stuff you can see is basically uh, glue, the residue off of the glue off of the back. Uh, but we'll get that off a bit later. It's just getting the main stuff off. You can see I don't have the camera can pick up, there's a lot of imperfections there in the wood. But they'll all come out with filler later. Um, so that's probably taken about 20-25 minutes, I guess, the whole cabinet there. And the other side of the back box probably looking about three hours to get the whole lot off so uh, I won't bore you with filming all of that I'll get on with it and uh, come back later okay so that's the main cabinet stripped it's all come off quite well there's a few bits of damage the usual stuff you get around the legs because obviously uh, that takes a bit of abuse over the years Unfortunately the cabinet's split on both sides, that's been glued so we might have a bit of trouble we might try and break that open and then uh, clamp it up again and fill it over this side it's all uh, it's split but that can all be, as you can see it's if you can see that's moving apart now but I'll, uh, I'll clamp all that up and glue it tonight so that it's ready tomorrow uh, a few odd bits of filler we've uncovered there but not too horrendous, I've seen a lot worse. So the next job is to get all this white residue off which is basically um, glue that stayed on there. Um, so that's what we've got to concentrate on next. Right, so where the uh, cabinet was all damaged, we've now uh, had that all clamped up. It's glued and clamped overnight so it should be pretty solid now. Also pinned it with an air pin gun um, because all of the, the the tiny little holes that leaves will be filled afterwards so uh, you won't see that just for a bit of added security so I'm going to whip those off the, uh, the uh, sash cramps and then uh, we can start getting rid of all that horrible glue okay so as I said this uh, process now is probably the most time consuming thing basically you've got to put white spirit on here which sort of melts the the white glue that is all this residue that's left over so you sort of spread it on quite liberally like that and just leave it to soak and then you've literally got to get a like a standing knife blade and just scrape it back like that and basically it, it all comes off in this congealed crap it uh, takes a long time but basically if you do it like that then you can get it back to mostly the wood there get most of it off uh, so that then you can sand it the problem is if you try and sand it like this that will all just clog up the the sanding pad so you'll just be forever changing new pads and it will cost you a fortune so although this is a pain in the butt to do because it takes so long it's well worth doing so uh, I'll see you in a few hours okay that's one side scraped so just to give you an idea that's obviously what it's like before and that's what it's like now I mean there's still stuff on there but that's most of it gone and that is the amount of gunk that's come off from one side so as you can see that's a that's a lot of glue so off to do the other sides now right so we've cleaned all the 
glue off or most of it now um, I've let all the white spirit dry on here because otherwise it will clog the sander up because whatever glues left there's still some tiny bits you can see there um, and they'll be soft otherwise so now we can sand it down um, I'm not going to give it too much of a sand off because we're going to put lots of filler in in various areas um, there are lots of little dings all over that uh, you won't really see with the camera and obviously all the bigger stuff like this uh, and all these edges down here that are all going to need filling so I'm going to give it a sand over now um, the sander I've got here is my one I use at work um, it's got uh, look quite lucky because it's got dust extraction on it it's got a big hoover which switches on when it's uh, when you're using it because otherwise you know the whole uh, garage would fill full of dust so if you've got to try it and you haven't got one like this then uh, you probably want to try and do it outside if the weather's okay the other thing is this is a random orbital sander so when the pad's moving it spins and it moves in all directions so that it doesn't score this the surface if you've got a pad that moves in one direction all the time like a belt sander it can sort of dig in and leave grooves etc so it's best to have one that's uh, that's random so that's it i'm going to give it all a sand over now the cabinet and the back box down there and uh, then come back once we uh, we're ready to put some filler into it so now i'm going to start filling putting the filler into the cabinet where it needs it i'll use a two-part uh, wood filler like this um, which you have to mix up it doesn't uh, you haven't got a lot of working time with it so you've got to get a move on but it's uh, it doesn't shrink or move and uh, it's pretty good so basically I've got to go around and do all the obvious bits um, like this that's been badly done and all the corners that have been knocked off all the little holes where uh, it's been glued I've glued and pinned all the corners on it and things we've got to pay special attention to, I don't know if you can pick that up, but all these little ridges here, um, they're where uh, the original decals have been scraped off, um, and also where I've been cleaning it up with a knife. Um, but they're all little dings that will, if you don't do them, they'll show through the decals when the new ones are put on. So it's very important that we get all them. So basically I'm going to knock up a load of filler now. Um, and, and spread it over all of that or as much of it as it I can a lot of these ones like the the deeper holes are going to need two or three fills just to make sure they're perfect and smooth these ones will only probably need one go over so I'll only use up whatever filler I knock up now if I've got any left over that'll all go in these holes but it doesn't matter if I don't do them all now because I can do them when I knock up the next lot to uh, to do all these ones again so I'm going to get cracking with that. Okay, so you sort of get used to what you're, how much of this you're using. Uh, basically the more harder you put in, the faster it's going to go off. But I've got quite large areas to do, so I'm not going to put a massive amount of hardener in. because normally you would only have a working time of a couple of minutes obviously because all this is going to get sanded down on here again um, it doesn't matter that I mix it up on here because I'm going to keep sanding over this so we've got to the back where all the old leg bolts were any joints do all the big holes first because that will use the maximum amount of filler up you've got to remember what holes you don't want filled as well um, that's where the old lockdown bar was so we want to get rid of them Basically this stuff sands down really easily so you don't have to worry about really putting too much on because it comes off so well. It's not worth messing about with. And we're going to fill that top hole there as well. 
so it's no longer needed. I can feel this filler starting to go off already actually, but it's reasonably old, so it doesn't have a massive shelf life this stuff. Just gonna get a bigger spreader. as much filler. And as usual, I've mixed up too much, I always do that. And areas like that where I filled that bolt in, I'm just going to overfill it quite a lot because as I said it's easy to sand down so better to do it that way than have to keep building up the filler. Alright, I think that'll almost do for a first coat. So we'll let that go off and uh, then start sanding. Right, so that's all the filling and sanding done now. They've all got nice sharp edges. All of that's nice and smooth. And then any bad bits are filled. Even on the tops here, and then uh, around the back. I've masked off any bits now because what we've got to do now is actually spray all the corners. So all of these bits here, because when we put the decals on, we'll then cut them back and these corners will be exposed. So I'm going to spray all of those black. So that includes all the bottom edges around here. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to spray inside because uh, those bits there will show when the play field's down so we might as well spray them while we're at it um, <clears throat> even though obviously it's not really part of the decal thing but uh, so I've masked up everything inside there lots of paper and I'm going to spray it I generally tend to use paint like this which is acrylic car paint I find that they uh, the spray works better on there the nozzles don't get clogged as much and uh, it just gives a better finish on there so what I'm going to do now is just quickly all of these areas that I'm going to spray now I'm just going to wipe them off with a, a damp cloth with white spirit on just to get rid of any dust on there and uh, then I'm going to spray all of those edges and once I've done the main cabinet I'll come over and do the uh, the back box there which is also uh, waiting ready and waiting to go now so as I said Wipe that down with a bit of white spirit now and uh, then spray all those edges. I forgot to mention also that inside these where the start and the extra ball button are we need to make sure that all gets sprayed inside as well because uh, that will all be exposed um, once all the decals are on and they're cut back. Too thick otherwise we'll get runs in it better to do a couple of fine coats and that's it so we've got to go all the way around like that now this is something I usually forget to do but I've actually remembered this time all the nuts and bolts that shine that show through that we've taken off from the edge of the cabinet and like all these big ones that hold the playfield sliding bars in and the back box hinges. If you get an old box, cut loads of slits in it and just poke them in there, then basically we can just uh, give them a spray like that, just lightly, give them two or three coats like that, and then they all come up nice and we haven't wrecked anything. So that's found quite a good way I found of spraying them all. So that's all the edges sprayed now of uh, the back box there and the main cabinet. So I'm just getting ready to put the decals on. Um, this is probably the 
thing that takes the least amount of time as with a lot of these things preparations most of it what I do is generally just give them a light rub down under there then I'll wipe all of that surface off with white spirit on a rag just to get rid of any dust on there so that you don't get any imperfections underneath then lay the decal on and I've positioned it so that when I bend it all around the edges it just fits on nicely because it doesn't um, there's not much left to trim a lot of these decals you'll get and they'll be sort of I don't know 10 mil over just with uh, in the main colors here like the black but there's nothing to play with on this so we've got to be careful uh, and then I've, I'll weight it down in position a couple of weights there and obviously some felt there to protect it and a set of four, four spare legs there holding it down so basically it won't move now um, and then uh, then it's ready to do uh, the disastrous dangerous bit of peeling it off and uh, what, of course once you start that there's no going back it's got to go down and that's it so you've got to make sure you're uh, you're very happy with how it's positioned what I'm doing I'm putting this end on first because all of these sections here that pattern will need to match up with down the sides now if I put the side bits on first and they're on they go on a bit crooked then this will have to go on crooked and it will be worse when it ends up on the other side so it's best to do this one first then we can do that side and then the other side as two separate things so if I have happened to have screwed something up then uh, I can get over it a bit but I uh, haven't had any problems yet so <laughs> but uh, just like to cover all my bases so that's it let's have a go at sticking this on okay so the weapons of choice we need uh, to put these on is one of these it's a, a rubber face roller so that uh, it doesn't damage anything um, you've got to be a bit careful actually because the first machine I ever did was a Circus Voltaire and actually using one of these the quality of the uh, decals wasn't very good and it actually lifted it off but um, the, the uh, printing on there but these are actually a lot better now so I don't think we get these problems little quite a flexible um, sort of hard plastic squeegee because if you get any little air pockets you can push them out with this and just this knife blade which against all uh, health and safety recommendation I'm going to keep in my mouth for a minute you'll see why because I'll need it in a second so I'll just move those out of the way <clears throat> so I've double checked all of this is positioned right so if I just fold these edges over I know all of this is going to meet around the edges um, I don't know if the camera can pick up these but this is a bit of a problem with these decals when they come they've, they've actually separated from the backing and it's bubbled off so obviously that's not if I put that down there these are not flat areas so th these are things we're going to have to try and push out um, hopefully that makes some sense so now if I fold that back I've actually dropped my knife blade because I didn't put it in my mouth because I was busy talking so what I tend to do is get the, the edge of this if I can find it. I should have put my glasses on. Peel that off and just lay that back there so it's not getting anything away. Remember these legs are keeping all of this in place at the moment. And then I just cut the backing paper off. All on there put that blade to one side <clears throat> and now if we lift this over I can pull this sort of fairly taut now it should oh, he said and that moves slightly then so I'm just going to check this again if you're not happy with it then don't do it, there's no going back once you've you've put it on I think it's still square there so ok, something I don't really want to hurry and obviously I only touch the very edges of these because even there you can see my fingerprints are being left on there so pull that just lay it lightly and then with this 
controller. I can just gently press it into place. That's all gone down nicely, and then take our weights off. Then just lay that back like that. Pull off the other half. Then we've got no danger of it moving with this half. So I'm just trying to stretch out those. bubbles down it goes and then because this is a greatest area I'll leave this bit up here to last because this is these symbols are the things we're trying to get level because there'd be nothing worse than if we put the coin door cut this out put the coin door back on and that's not square so. So I don't know if the camera can pick up this pushing out Bubbles there. You've got to watch it, you can't push it all the way because then it will crease up. So you've got to get them to a certain level and take them out to the side. Those of you that do wallpapering will have a reasonable understanding of what I mean. And if you've never done wallpapering, I suggest you don't try this. So there we go. That one's on there got a couple of bubbles I'll push out there in a second with this um, but the basic that's on and now we've just got a I'll get a straight edge trim around the edge of here and uh, we'll be ready to sit one of the sides on so now that's on we can just go around and trim all these edges off I've got just one of these craft knife with the disposable blades these we can just go around and do the edges roughly for now because in a minute we're going to go around and trim the, them back a little bit. So it doesn't matter if these are a little bit rough. Might look like I'm speeding a bit but you'll see why in a minute. Those are sticky bits on the floor, I'm going to trip over now. There we go. And also things like the where the coin door goes. As you can see that line down there, I know you can see it, is very even, so that's, that's just an indication that this is on pretty square. Or that the decal is pretty square, you never know with these things. <coughs> and then just locate the start button. Now you've got to be a little bit more careful with those because Obviously, this will stay like this. So whatever we cut out there, so they don't, we won't be able to cut that back. And that's why I said to spray the interior of those, um, because now obviously they're they're exposed. You can just feel where they are. Just start a little bit inside and just work out a bit. I'm not getting my massive head in the way of the camera now. There we go. So that's the main bits done. Obviously there are all the bolt holes, etc., which we can locate there. And I mean I'd just put a cross in these because we're gonna 
just push the bolts through so they really don't matter. If you don't actually cut the circles out. And then there's the ones for the gun holes. There. Put your finger behind them as well because you're more likely to track them down. That's where the wires go through for the trigger switch. should be over there but I've probably got some filler in that so I'll punch something through there in a minute. Right now if I can find my straight edge here it is what we need to do is if we lay that along there and I have to put my glasses on now we need to position it probably about we've cut that off level and if you look at it, a pinball machine at the bottom of here it's got like a sh tapered chamfered edge um, so we need to expose that and about another two millimeters up um, so I've cut that all off level so now if I put that on there and then run along the straight edge with the knife not pressing too hard against the straight edge because that might move it, so you want them to keep pressure on there all the time and go all the way along and then we can just peel that bit off and that leaves a nice edge on there so I'm going to repeat it all the way around, I'll just cut out the semicircles for where the, the bolt holes go Obviously all these areas will be hidden by the legs once they go down, but <clears throat> now these are actually not chamfered on the side, so what we're looking for is just a nice clean edge. And basically we're doing this so that <clears throat> when you uh, brush up against them, they don't catch like that. So that's really the only reason I'm cutting these edges back and that's the other reason that it's all been sprayed black because it just looks a lot neater then. So again keeping a nice pressure on the straight edge. All the way down. I'll show once this is all done on show a bit of detail of all this so once I've done this one decal here then I will uh, change the blade in this knife because you don't want to try and do too many with it That's the front one done. So now basically I'm going to do the same to both the sides on this and then the two sides on the back box. Um, obviously making sure I protect it. Once I get the, uh, I'll put this on a workbench now so it's higher up and obviously make sure I've got uh, sheeting and stuff on there to protect it because for one thing the, the, the actual sides of the machine have been prepared um, so I don't want to mess those up. But obviously if you 
ding it, you put any dings in it, or I do the decals on the other side and lay it on there, I don't want to damage them, so I'm just being uh, being extra careful with it. So that's it, I'm going to do the other sides, and I won't bore you with watching all those, and then we'll come back after that. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to put the side one on now. I've positioned it. Um, really, it's the front front edge there, and all along this edge is the edge you want to get right. So when you fold that over, it's just onto the yellow, and obviously that will get cut back a bit as well, because the top edge here, none of that gets seen, because obviously the side rails will cover a good sort of 20 mil down the side of that, so you don't see any of that. Um, this is what I was talking about getting the, the lines to line up at the front obviously if I look straight on at that you can see these lines here all line up but then if you move down to these they're slightly off square which is really annoying I've had this before on ones like this but to be honest being a bit picky because the leg covers that so you don't really notice it I just have to fume inside my head that it's like it um, and it's like that on my one I think all of these decals are a bit like that but you have to arrange them really so that these lines carry round and then the same on the other side because they're the bits that you're, you know, you're, if you're, you're sitting down and looking at it or staring at it from the front, that's what you're going to notice that sort of these bits here, that V shape doesn't carry on and line up with that. So it's, you're never going to get it 100% right, but you know, obviously getting these lines to go round and these arch bits to carry on. Um, we'll, we'll do the best we can with it. So basically it's the same procedure as we did for the front panel there, um, just a lot bigger. So I'm gonna, where I was with this panel here, I cut that, um, I did heart, stuck half of it at a time. I'm gonna actually do this in probably four sections. So exactly as I did before, I'm gonna stick it, peel it back and cut the backing off here. Stick this bit, because this is the most important, and then fold the whole thing back over and peel a bit at a time so that I can just gently squeeze this along and make sure we've got no air pockets or anything in it and again all of the underneath I've just given it another very light sand over apart from sort of the edge 10 millimeters of the paint and then giving it all a wipe over with uh, a clean cloth with white spirit now you can see the, the bumps in here but to be honest this is all right because this is right at the back so they're just all going to get smoothed out because this is nice and flat so I'm not too worried about the issues with this um, and then again you can see once you bend that over there that will all be cut off and you won't see any of that you want to check it the front the bottom and the back with these um, and this top section here actually gets cut back along this line here so it gets cut back to the bottom of the ply there so that's uh, that's not too much of an issue so I'm gonna get on with that and then I'll do the other side I won't bore you with watching it but uh, there we go I'll be back later right as you can see the uh, back box is done now on both sides it went on quite nicely and now the cabinet's done all the way around all went on really well as you can see it's all nice and neat around there and where it's all been cut back just going back to what I said about these so I've lined up these lines so that they go across there and the V's match etc and these lines match here well if you go down you see how far out they are at the bottom it was absolutely amazing when this is meant to be a decal you know that uh, that is meant to match up because absolutely nothing matches at the bottom I've done three four of these and they've all been the same I don't know why it is so if you go to the other side you can see exactly the same thing it's better this side I mean it's really weird how that can be quite close here and out on the other side but there you go as we said before they're behind the legs so especially with some leg protectors on you'll never notice that but it's uh, just bizarre so now I've got to fit everything back on uh, we we'll get all the coin door all the buttons and stuff back in first and then the playfield will slot back in basically as they say in the car manuals refitting is a reversal of the removal procedure so 
everything will slot back in in uh, reverse order that it came out hopefully then we'll switch it on and it'll work time will tell okay so I'm getting there now everything's uh, back on the play fields back in and it's all powered up so everything uh, seems okay one last thing I just wanted to show was the generally when these side rails if you were going to all this bother you'd replace them to be honest but with this one these were in quite good nick so when you strip them off there's like all this foam rubber stuck on behind so before you stick these back on you need to give them a real good scrape with a heavy scraper you can get most of it off like that and then if you clean it up with white spirit afterwards it makes all the glue go soft and you can give it another scrape just with a scraper like that and it'll uh, it'll get most of it off so then you can just put some double sided tape I use some that's like about half a mil thick foam stuff um, and it's double, obviously double sided very strong and then they'll just stick back on and uh, obviously they've got the bolt down this end so that's the last thing to do and uh, put the back glass in and then she's ready to go right so there it is all done all ready to go back to its owner looking a lot better than it did when it came in obviously there are lots of different ways other people will have different ways of doing this it's just the way I've sort of found best for myself over probably a dozen of these so far all the little sort of tips you pick up you know like uh, sort of trimming all these edges back because it gives a much neater finish than uh, than if you trim them right up to the edge so that's it hopefully this isn't too rushed this video and it might give you a bit of uh, enthusiasm to do it yourself but uh, if you don't fancy doing it yourself you know where I am drop us a line